Wonder Bread and Hostess Cakes bring you The Wonder Show, starring Jack Haley. With Lucille Ball, Virginia Merrill, Artie Arbach, Ted Fiorito and his orchestra, and the happy Wonder Bakers. something I know you've always wanted? <laughs> a football. A football? Gee, is there a Christmas card on it? No. <laughs> I've got nothing on the ball. You're telling me. <laughs> well? Oh, say, I almost forgot to order the food for this party. I'd better call up the delicatessen. Hey, gang, anybody here got a nickel? <laughs> I should know better than that. I'll use my own. Uh, operator, get me Crestview, 14916. Hello, Joe. Uh, this is Jack Haley. That's right. Uh, I want to give you an order. Oh, I've been busy at the studio. Oh, you say you saw my last picture? How did you like it? Certainly I'll pay cash. <laughs> Oh, uh, here's the order. Uh, I want some stuffed olives. Stuffed olives. You know, those big green peas with the tail light. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's it, yeah. And some cheese. How much is your caramel bear cheese? 35 cents a pound. Well, how much is your Lindbergh cheese? 36 cents a pound. Why, there's only the difference of a cent. Oh, but what a cent. Oh, I... <laughs> oh, say, Joe, I should have some drinks, too. Have you got any charged water? You have? Well, send over a bottle and charge it. I didn't like that either, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> You'll be right over? Okay, thanks. Oh, Jack, I just opened your gift to me, and it's beautiful. Do you really like it, Lucille? Oh, it's wonderful. What did you give Lucille, Jack? A two-piece beach outfit. A two-piece beach outfit? Yeah, a pail and a shovel. <laughs> I used mine all last summer. Answer the door, will you, Gail? Yeah. Don't tell me it's the man from Joe's Delicatessen so soon. No, it's the officer on the beach, Jack. He wants to see you. Oh, well, what do you want, officer? Say, Haley, is that your red car with a lavender top and the fawn-colored wheels parked in front of the fire plug? Uh, yes, sir, that's mine. Gee, it's a beauty. <laughs> In behalf of the boys in the band and myself, we wish you a Merry Christmas, and how about my present? <laughs> my hands are full, Ted. Reach in my back pocket and you'll find your present there. Okay, Jack. <laughs> what did you get, Ted? A pair of shorts, look. <laughs> Ted, those are mine. I ought to have that hole in my back pocket sewed up. Here's your present, Ted. Open it up. Oh, Jack, this is beautiful. A sweater. I'm glad you like it, Ted. I didn't know what size sweater you wear, so I just took a guess. Try it on. Okay, Jack. <laughs> there. Well, Ted, how does the sweater fit? Okay, Jack, but it's a little tighter on the ankles. <laughs> <laughs> how do you like that? I had a feeling I should have pearled two instead of three. <laughs> I dropped a stitch there someplace. I still think it uh, doesn't look bad, Ted. 
It's supposed to be a pullover. Looks more like a hangover. <laughs> well, if you're not satisfied with the sweater, Ted, you can take it off. I'll be glad to. What happened? I pulled up the zipper. But the sweater didn't have a zipper. This is a fine time to tell me. <laughs> Maybe that's the man from Joe's Delicatessen. I hope so, because then we can start the party. Come in. Mr. Haley, I am Ivan Samarovich. I come from a secret organization of Russia, the Agpu, to offer you Christmas felicitations, comrade. Wait a minute. What do you mean, comrade? I don't belong to the Agpu. You must be crazy. I am not crazy. All over the world, when people listen to you on the radio, they say, Haley, oh, GPU. <laughs> I'm not going to let that spoil my party. Boys will be boys. <laughs> in fact, Christmas makes kids of us all. What do you say, Ted? Haven't you and the other boys and girls got a song we can dedicate to children everywhere? You better have, Jack. We'll give the kiddies a ride on the Santa Claus Express. All aboard! Well, gee, I can't wait till I get a look on my stocking Christmas morning. Come on, everybody. While we're waiting for the food to arrive, let's have some fun like we did at Christmas parties when we were kids. All right. Huh? All right. I'll start the ball rolling by reciting a little poem with gestures. Uh, Ted, hand me that bow and arrow. Here you are, Jack. All right. Here goes the poem. I shoot an arrow into the air. It falls to earth. I know not where. I shoot another arrow into the air. It falls to earth. Ouch! I know where. (laughs) The end. Right. (laughs) Okay. Oh, Lucille, come on now. It's your turn to do something. All right, Jack. I'll recite a poem, too. Quiet, everybody. Lucille's going to recite a poem. Go ahead, Lucille. When you are walking with your loved one and he gazes in your eyes, and you feel your heart is burning, just Elka Seltzer eyes. <laughs> Isn't that cute? I love that. Now it's time for Virginia to do something. <laughs> I'm best. Oh, come on, Virginia. Oh, Read oh, oh, oh. Well, all right. A poem. A poem. Go ahead. No moon, no sun, no stars, no flowers, November. See? <laughs> <laughs> That's beautiful. We're very well done, Virginia. Now, Ted, uh, how about you reciting a poem? I don't know any poems, Jack, but I've got a riddle for you. You've got a riddle? Oh, that's swell, gang. Listen. Oh, right. uh, quiet, quiet. Ted's going to uh, ask a riddle. Go ahead, Ted. 
What is it that has eight legs, green eyes, a yellow back, purple wings, and a long black finger? Now, wait a minute. I give up. What has eight legs, green eyes, a yellow back, purple wings, and a long black finger? I don't know, Jack, but it's crawling on your collar. <laughs> oh, this time it must be the food from Joe's delicatessen. Come in. Oh. Uh, you the man from Joe's Delicatessen who is bringing us all these choice morsels of food and delectable? Yeah, it could be. <laughs> well, uh, it's about time you got here. What took so long? Well, I came down in my car and I had gas trouble. You had gas trouble? Yeah. You mean you ran out of fuel? No, I couldn't gas where you live. <laughs> Uh, let me see that basket there. I want to see if you have all the stuff that I ordered. Wait a minute. I didn't order all these things. Ooh, don't irritate yourself, Mr. Haley. I brought you some extra delicacies that I thought maybe you would like. Delicacies of who? Yeah, they, 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 they're very nice. Uh, yeah, just look at these broiled lamb chops. Nothing doing. I don't want those lamb chops. They're cold. Cold? Let me see. Who oh my, the paper pen this fell off. <laughs> well, come, 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 Mr. Haley. Don't dilly-dilly. I can't stay here all night. I got plenty of trouble at home. Plenty of trouble at home? Yes. My wife, Petunia, ran away from the hospital with the ice bag still on her head. What happened? She won first prize in a millinery show. <laughs> oh, I won't detain you long. Now, look. Don't forget, I have people here at a party. Now, what other items have you got that I didn't order? Oh, I have here a bottle of milk fresh from the cow. Fresh from the cow? Yes. Hey, wait a minute. This milk is sour. Sour? Yes, that's from the curdle. Chris, I didn't even know the cow wore one. <laughs> oh, my. I'll, uh... I'll take all that stuff that you have there. Now, add yeah. up the bill and tell me, uh, what have you got there? Well, let me see. I got cream cheese, Swiss cheese, head cheese, apologies, peas soup, bean soup, dog soup, and alley oop, cupcakes, wheat cakes, pancakes, stomach eggs, jams, yams, clams, and ham. I also brought rib steaks, veal steaks, lamb steaks, coffee cakes, black tea, green tea, iced tea, crackery, red beets, dead beets, drum beets, candy beets, chops, hops, mops, and tops, and cocktails for two, a dollar sixty-five. <laughs> a sweet voice. You know, I'll bet if you asked him, Jack, he'd sing a song and entertain your guests, maybe. That's right. Uh, say, how about singing something that uh, has the Christmas spirit? Oh, I don't mind if I do. Uh, what's your favorite carol? Nancy. <laughs> uh, no, I'm speaking of popular songs. Oh, I'm a little bit old-fashioned. I don't know any popular songs. Well, supposing Virginia and I sing the song first and you can come in on the second chorus. All huh? right, yes. I'll All right. Oh, Ted... I want to sing to Virginia. Will you play I Want You for Christmas? Christmas will soon be here. That's one time of the year. It's proper to plant a stocking for Santa, hoping that he'll appear on that pleasant day when presents are given away. I just want one gift on December 25th. I want you for Christmas. Anything that Santa would bring to never compare with you. I want you for Christmas. You're a pet that money can't get, and nothing but you will do. I just wrote a letter, and if my wish comes true, you can bet by Jimmy you'll come down the chimney with a bag full of you. I want you for Christmas. If only Santa does what he should, I'm knocking on wood for him to make good. Christmas morning, baby, I only want you. Here's what I want, Jack. I want you for Christmas. Say, I don't care for Freddy is there. Mm, he doesn't compare to. Mm, could be, but how about me for Christmas? I'm a ding-dong daddy, not good and not baby. I'm a regular swinger. Oh, yeah, man. I'm better than Crosby with his boo 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 la de I'm even better than Clarky Babel because she's near, near as cute as me. I know, Artie, but you see, I want Jackie for Christmas. And although Robert Taylor gives me a thrill, say, don't you be still, for I'm telling you still. Christmas morning, baby. I only want Santa Claus, Santa Claus, make her wish come true. Christmas morning, baby. I only want you. I'm so neglected. Christmas morning, baby. I only want you. Now, now, Gail, it's your 
your turn to contribute a little something to our Christmas party. Well, really, Jack, isn't it enough that Wonder Bread will contribute the most delicious, savory dressing imaginable at millions of Christmas parties? That's important, all right, Gail, but you said you were going to bring some sort of game. Oh, sure, yes. I've got it right here in my pocket. It's a question and answer game. Wait till I take it out here. Here we... Ah, here. There it is. <laughs> it's, uh, it's Uncle Gail's What Pot for Busy Housewives. Sounds glamorous. Well, Lucille, here's your question. It's very interesting and full of laughs. Just answer yes or no, Lucille. Should any woman be satisfied with bread that isn't absolutely fresh and hasn't the three advantages of better texture, better fragrance, better flavor? Now, think hard. Well, I'd say no. You're right. Absolutely right. Since you can get all four advantages for the same money, why put up with any other bread? Uh, Now, Virginia, here's your question. Can you tell us which bread thousands of women are switching to each week because it does offer freshness, plus better texture, fragrance, and flavor? It uh, couldn't be Wonder Bread, could it? Uh, could be. <laughs> could be and is slow-baked Wonder Bread. Absolutely right. And now, Jack, keep up the record. Tell us what slow-baking does for Wonder Bread. Well, uh, I'd say slow-baking Wonder Bread slowly. Right you are. 100% for the men. Uh, confidentially, Jack. Slow baking also retains more of the fresh fragrance and flavor in Wonder Bread and gives it a better texture. But that's a perfect score for everybody. And to the ladies listening in, let me say that for a perfect score on your shopping tomorrow, when you pay for the best, get the best. Get the bread that's absolutely fresh, plus the advantages of better texture, better fragrance, and better flavor. Ask for Slow Bake Wonder Bread. Now, how's that for a good game? Not bad, not bad. Looks like Santa Claus must be using plugs instead of reindeer this year. (laughs) Well, how about you, Virginia? We can't have a Christmas party without a song from you. All right, I'll sing the number one song hit of the day, My Reverie. Bells were ringing, birds were singing, yet my heart was lonely till I found you were so near me. In my reverie, our love is a dream, but in my reverie, I can see that this love was meant for me. Only a fool, never seen in a world fool, love romance could be so true. As you are to me, my dreams are as worthless as sin to me, but without you, life could never begin to be so lovely, as I love you in my reverie, make my dreams a reality. Let's dispense with formality. Come to me in my tell you about the further adventures of that super sleuth, Wanda Haley. The action of tonight's story takes place in one of our big department stores. This episode is called Murder in the Sweater Department, or Much Ado About Knitting. (laughs) Some yarn. Oh. (laughs) The scene opens at police headquarters during a big crime wave. Captain Gordon, head of the department, has his men on the carpet. Call 
yourself, policeman? Ah, why can't you be like Wanda Haley? What's the evidence that was so great, Chief? Plenty. He's run most of the crooks out of town. Why, when he caught Danny the Dip, what did he give him? 24 hours to get out. Right. And when he caught Joe the Dip, what did he give him? 24 hours to get out. Right. And when he caught that pan dancer in his room, what did he give her? 24 hours to get out. Right. No! <laughs> oh, there'll never be another sleuth as great as Wonder. Uh, Sometimes I wish... That... Telegram for you, Chief. Oh, I'll take it. Wait a minute. There's something moving in the envelope. It's getting bigger. It looks human. It is human. Oh, Why, Why, Wonder! Wonder! It's Wonder! <laughs> Oh, that was a swell disguise, Wanda. But I knew it was you all the time. <laughs> anyway, I'm glad you're here. Well, what's up, Chief? Plenty. You realize we're having a big outbreak of crime? Statistics show that a man is shot in this town every ten minutes. Gosh, how can he stand it? Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but they can't defeat justice. The arm of the law will reach out. And when the arm of the law reaches out, what happens? An apple is missing. <laughs> I'll take it, Chief. Uh, police headquarters. Wonder speaking? A man I mean, just Wanda broke speaking. into my room. I say, a man just broke into my room and I'm holding him. What's the charge? There's no charge. I just love holding him. Uh, another petty case. Wonder? I sent you out on a secret mission. Did you interview my ex-secretary, Lucille Laverne? Uh, yes, Chief. What happened? She won't talk. Thank goodness. <laughs> We're both safe. Uh, I'll get it. Hello, Wonder speaking. I have a complaint to register. There's a man annoying me in a parked car at the corner of Sunset and Vine Street. A man annoying you at the corner of Sunset and Vine, eh? I'll take care of that. Chief, hand me the police microphone. Calling all cars. Calling all cars. Calling police officer O'Brien. Cut it out. <laughs> Just one thing after another. Hello. Hello. Hello, police headquarters. Yes? This is Thimble Brothers Department Store. A man has just been murdered here. Murdered, eh? Have you got the body? Yes. I'll be right over. <laughs> we deliver, you know. You do? Yes, yes. Uh, well, perhaps you'd like to have it wrapped in a gift package. Uh, yes. No, no. I'll be right over. Come on, men. Let's go. So long, Chief. So long, men. <laughs> well, here we are. Well, we have to go back. We forgot something. What did we forget? We forgot the car. <laughs> Never mind, we've got no time to lose. Put the siren in your pocket and let's go in the department store. Mm, looks pretty busy in here. I wonder where the corpse is. I'd better ask this girl behind the counter. What can I do for you, sir? Uh, I'm looking for a corpse. What size, please? You don't understand, miss. I'm looking for a corpse with a bullet hole in it. I'm sorry, sir. I don't think we have any more in stock. <laughs> Look, miss, for the third time, I'm looking for a corpse. Say, I'm only working here for the Christmas holidays. I don't know where everything is. <laughs> hey, Maisie. Yes, Terry. This gentleman is looking for a body. <laughs> he can use one. <laughs> Say, ladies, we're not getting anywhere. Come on, men, let's go. We'll find the corpse ourselves. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Oh, there's the body. Just look at it. Oh, I can truthfully say that in my 20 years of detective work, I've never seen a more horrible sight. You want to buy that mirror, mister? You've been looking at it long enough. <laughs> Gee, wonder. There's the body lying over there. And I guess that's the store detective standing over it. I'll go over and talk to him. Uh, officer, I'm Inspector Wonder from headquarters. How did this killing happen? Well... He was shot in the back, and there's a hole in his chest. Wait a minute. He was shot in the back. How come there's a hole in his chest? When he heard the shot, he turned around. <laughs> Did you find 
any clues around the body? Yeah, here's his traveling bag. Yeah, you can go through that. And here's his credentials. And you can go through that. And here's his wallet with a roll of bills in it. No, I'll go through that. <laughs> there he goes, Chief. Well, don't worry, I'll get him. There he is. Cowering in the corner. Stick him up, you murderer. I give up. I did it. I killed him. You killed this man, eh? Yeah. He was my uncle, but he was very mean to me. Mean to you, eh? Yes. Because of him, I was an object of scorn and derision. I could only go out at night. I had to sink down back alleys, and when I walked down the street, people laughed at me. <laughs> oh, that's terrible. What did the fiend do that caused all that? What did he do? Look at the Christmas tie he gave me. Oh. <laughs> That's a shame, the poor fella. Well, it's an awful looking tie. You can go free. And we'll call it justifiable homicide. Well, another case is solved. And what's the name of the man who did it? By thunder, it's wonder! <laughs> Imagine how marvelous Hostess cupcakes must be when women, proud of their baking, prefer to buy them rather than bake cupcakes at home. And how the men go for Hostess cupcakes. They're such rich, luscious devil's food and crowned with thick, creamy frosting. And listen to this offer. Bake cupcakes at home with your finest recipe. Compare them. If Hostess cupcakes aren't better, don't cost you less, you get double your money back. Try a package of two Hostess cupcakes for only five cents. They're guaranteed fresh. Look for them on your grocer's counter. Hollywood, California, December 23rd, 1938. Dear Diary, had a fine Christmas party tonight. We all had lots of fun. I'm going home now and hang up my stockings for Santa Claus. Gee, I hope they fit him. <laughs> Oh, yes, dear diary. You'll be surprised to hear that I have a guest star for my next week's show. He is William Gargan, who gave such a fine performance with Robert Taylor in The Crowd Roars. What a wonderful Christmas this is, diary. Me and everyone else in this country. Here the spirit of Christmas still lives. Here our children have a chance to grow up knowing the real meaning of peace on earth, goodwill to men. This is your man Friday. Hoping to be your man Friday, every Friday, at the same hour. Good night, and a very Merry Christmas to all. Yo ho, yo ho, yo ho, yo hen. We are the bakers of wonder bread. For Mama and Papa and Billy and Ben. And also for little sisters. We are the bakers in spotless white. Who spend the polish in shining bright. Who bid you now a happy good night. A rock on a wonder baker. Yo ho. currently appearing in RKO's Next Time I Marry. Jack Haley's latest picture, Thanks for Everything, for 20th Century Fox, has been acclaimed by the critics as one of the best. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System.